Moini, this is a dedicated video to why I want Wakanda Forever to make the least amount of money possible. I've explained it before here in live streams, maybe part of other places, but this is if you're looking for it. Where do we begin here? Let's go, let's go back. Throughout history, civilizations have risen and fallen. There have been many plights, many nasty, terrible things. One terrible event in history that has ramifications up to this day would be about 400 years ago, in year 1619. A lot of people with dark skin were taken by people with light skin to this new continent. Uh, there's a lot of murder, a lot of nasty things happened. There was some slavery and free labor that was done to get this place here on the west part of the map to uh, I don't know, a, a advanced or a civilized world. It turns out that the places with people with lighter skin in the world that we live in, around the one that we're, presently 2022, are inhabited mostly or or uh, by people with light skin, so white people basically. All right, in this world. Something called Hollywood spouted. Uh, the movie industry, film industry is very influential. The images and uh, subconscious messages that get sent when we see someone in a position or an actor or, or, or a character in a position does have ramifications into the real life. And, uh, and the, what's the word I'm looking for? Influence. So, the, so we have a industry wide that, that's influential. And it turns out historically it's in, in Hollywood white actors white roles white characters have been featured higher prominently uh more bigger budgets more than the ones who are black okay now the few times black characters are in movies it's things like shaft it's things like like uh like like bad boys things like with a lot of swearing definitely not wholesome people no, no, not too heroic but th there are limited ones and the few that are out there which are positive depictions of black people are not highly budgeted or, but it's a majority of gang stuff. It's a majority of negative stuff that you don't really want your kids to aspire to grow up to be majority of it. And then a hero comes along in 2018. There becomes this movie called black Panther, not the first superhero who's black with a leading film. I think Wesley Snipes can claim that with blade, but the representative that is blade compared to the representative that is T'Challa black Panther it's night and day. No character in the history of film that Lawrence Fishburne has played or Denzel Washington has played touches that character that Chadwick Boseman played. Nobody that Angela Bassett has ever played or Sam Jackson has ever played or Jamie Foxx, Wesley Snipes, like I said, Chris Rock, The Rock, any, any there's no character this popular as the Black Panther, T'Challa. Specifically, the character named T'Challa. It's not about the Black Panther. All right. We set that. It's very necessary to set that foundation before I say what's what comes next. So, with this guy who is from a place in the world which has been robbed naked and, and, and it's uncolonized, it's Wakanda, and the, he's the king of it, and you know he got like four movie appearances with it, I'm like, boom, this is great. I know that Batman and Superman are characters who are constantly recast. Iteration after iteration until everyone who's alive today knows who Superman is. And I'm like, okay, cool. So like young people definitely have been indoctrinated or <laughs> it, it influenced. They know who T'Challa is. They can see that person. They see value in that character. And I'm like, boom, let's get... This is the next generation to get, and then the next generation underneath the next generation. Let's get them all familiar with T'Challa until he becomes as valuable as, you know, the same way we got Spider-Man to the position he is, Wolverine, Thor, Iron Man. We can do that. We, we Iron Man was nobody in 2008. He was very underpopular and then became the Iron Tony Stark, you know, like we know Iron Man now. So I'm thinking, okay, same studio. They've got the funds. They can do it again. And it's not happening. So Wakanda Forever represents a film, but also a decision to permanently remove T'Challa, this character who I think is the best representative to get a black character on the position of all those white characters. Wakanda Forever represents, no, if this movie makes a lot of money, we actually don't need T'Challa. We can, we can go the next decade 
Because Marvel's not stopping at Phase 4. There's going to be a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can go that long without T'Challa. I view that as a poor decision. I view it regressive racially. Like I really think that we, we, the world, are better off having T'Challa in it. Or the, in a movie with T'Challa. Not just one movie I'm talking of. And not just a Black Panther movie or Avengers movie. A, a Daredevil movie. A anything. T'Challa can squeeze into a Fantastic Four. Put him into the X-Men. That character is of value. If Wakanda Forever makes what it's like at 55% of what the first movie made. If that ends up being the box office final final results, because Avatar is going to come in and just move, move that movie out of the theaters. I believe that I will be able, I'll feel very confident in saying to you, to anyone who asks me, I'll say, the decision to permanently remove T'Challa is not, what's the word I'm looking for? Financially what? Financially fit? It's not, it's not a smart decision. It's not a, it's not a consciously profitable, it's not the best possible move that you could be doing at your studio. But reviving this character because it is fantasy and restoring that character, the, the character called T'Challa, who is the one that Chadwick Boseman played, not Toussaint or some other thing that you named T'Challa. The actual T'Challa, if you can get that guy back and use him and, you know, and I get what I want because what I want is the world to be exposed to this top tier character and be treated the same way as Superman and people can have reverence and value him. And I say people, I'm not talking about black kids only. I'm talking about white kids who can, oh, look, there's my favorite character has dark skin. This may, <laughs> this may have a domino effect in my regular day life. And one day I'll be in a position of power and all of a sudden, oh, because, you know, white kids tend to be in positions of powers. It's crazy what redlining and all the crazy stuff. Like we're going back into history mode. Uh, it's, yes, you see the the people who made laws, actually, what they did was they made it so that black people couldn't live in these neighborhoods, even though they could totally vote and you know that you're free and all that stuff, but you can't live here, you can't live there. And then the crazy thing is like schools, in public schools, were funded by property taxes. And so if... It, you, you see how like it's systemic you see no no we're ignoring that i don't know again who watches my channel who rejects stuff like that I, I don't think i speak to that audience but to anyone who is here hi welcome it's chillmonger where we you know it's anti-white supremacy youtube channel back to my topic though i believe that white kids need to be exposed to someone like t'challa and it can't be well first it's t'challa then it's going to be shuri and then there's this little kid little tj he's going to be Black Panther, if for the next movie, we'll age him up because comic books. I don't want the mantle of the Black Panther being batteried, being um, tossed, hot potatoed. This guy, this guy, that guy, that guy. That's not what got Batman popular. It's not what got Spider-Man popular. We didn't get experimental with Spider-Man. The Miles Morales movie was like the 10th ever time we've ever seen Spider-Man in a movie. Then they got experimental. Let's establish this T'Challa guy first. I understand that you can make Black Panther a mantle, but it's also a mantle that gets passed from generations. And time in comic books is slow. Time in comic books has only about 13 years that have passed in a sliding timeline. T'Challa was the Black Panther when we were introduced to, to him. And all these years later, T'Challa is still the Black Panther. There have been times where other people called themselves Black Panther, and we always identified them as other Panthers, and we knew T'Challa was the guy. And T'Challa was in every single one of those comics, including the six comic book issues that Shuri is recognized as the Black Panther. He's in, he's in it. And they're working together um, because Doom has... I did a whole video on it, and you can watch that. It's called It Happened in the Comics. You can watch that if you want to inform yourself on how Shuri's run went as the Black Panther. If this movie makes a lot of money, 1.3, if it makes 1.2 billion dollars, let's just say, because last time it had China, which gave them 105 million. Last time it had Russia, which gave them like what, 30 million. Let's just say this movie makes 1.2 billion dollars. They go, we're just as profitable. We're just as fine. No need to change anything here. We'll resume Black Panther in Marvel's studios using Shuri or using another person. It's the it's the mantle. But because this movie made. 55% of what that first movie made, they can go, huh, the value of T'Challa is $600 million. 
macro, like zoom out, look at the next generation, look at the next decade. Do you want the top black character in the history of film in it? Yes. If you do, then you could probably think like the way I think. It's best for Wakanda Forever to flop. And no matter how many people who are black are going to be employed in this movie, it's better for this movie to flop so that the next 10 years have T'Challa in them or they can regroup. I'm not fooled and tricked because this is a black woman-led movie and black women in the supporting cast. And they are underrepresented, poorly represented too. And this is a positive thing. I'm not going to be tricked because something good is happening that it should be removing the best possible character in the history of film. Yes, Okoye, Den- Denai Guerrero, Lupita Nyong'o, Angela Bassett. Uh, I guess not her anymore. Spoilers. Um, um, Letitia Wright. They're like the, the major, you know, they're the four leading people in Black Panther. Winston Duke is there too. And women have gotten a rough time in Hollywood. But just because you're using them doesn't mean that I can go, oh, well, at least I got something good. I'm not going to pretend that. I'm not going to settle for worse than top black representation. If I wanted female representation, I wouldn't look for the supporting character of the Black Panther franchise to be my A. I'd be looking at Monica. And I'd say, why is Captain Marvel 2 changing its title to The Marvels, squeezing Monica in there, and acting like, yay, we're representing women. If you really care, if you really, Marvel Studios, if you valued the character of Monica Rambeau and the actress who plays her, put a $200 million budget behind her, hire the best possible screenwriter, Marcus and McFeely, they're not busy, and have them give her a movie. You care? That's how you do it. I'm not fooled. I'm not fooled. I want Wakanda forever to make the least amount of money possible. I want T'Challa to be back. Every dollar that it doesn't make, that Black Panther 1 did make, I can point at T'Challa as the reason for it, logically. He's a great representative. I call him the best. Maybe someone out there is challenging me and be like, no, no, there was one movie that I saw with Eddie Murphy and he killed it, so that's the best character. Fine. T'Challa's the second best, okay? Let's even go with T'Challa's the third best. But it's definitely not Sam Wilson or Shuri or Monica or... I guess Storm's not in there yet, but there's definitely no other character. This highly, this powerful, this uh, great, excellent. I await the comment section. Um, I don't know. I still feel like there's going to be some bad faith arguments. Is there anything I can do to counter that with this next little bit? No. There's going to be idiots. There's going to be wrong people who are going to try to fight me and try to say you're anti-black. Or I, I, I try to. To those who didn't understand, you now understand. Or you're playing dumb. Either or. But let's have a conversation in the comment. Especially if I know you. Especially if you've commented before. I'll actually value your opinion. If you're just a new guy with no screen, no avatar, I'll be like, who the hell is this guy trying to stir some stuff? Okay? Okay. So I value you. Leave a comment. Even if you disagree, we'll, we'll discuss. Thank you.